Hi everybody, my name is Kaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. We are the Yahoo and the Torah channel. We thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. We appreciate you guys. It is a Sabbath day and we love you guys. And we love our creator. We love his son. We love the words of our creator. And we appreciate you guys hanging out with us today. Shabbat day is a very, very important time. It is a sign, is a mark of the sign of our creator upon the people of him. If you are one, somebody who calls themselves a child of the Most High, the mark of that day is the beginning of keeping this day, which is the Shabbat, it's the seventh day. And so with the seventh day, um, let us begin. Jade, you got an ironic blessing with us? Uh, no, it's uh, the Shema. The uh, Shema, actually, go for it. Are you have a Shema? Yeah, no, I can get it real quick. Here, let me do it real quick. Let me go from my side. All right, so guys, let's start with this right here, and we will do the Shema out of Deuteronomy 6. And this is kind of a, um, well, it's kind of a... It is there, but it's that first three sets. Yep. Okay, guys. Hear, O Yashrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu. Yahuwah is one. And you shall love Yahuwah Eloheka with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house. And when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up and you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the posts of your house and upon your gates. Okay, guys, that is um, out of Deuteronomy. And let us begin with a word of prayer. Kate, hit it. Father, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for this Shabbat, and I thank you for bringing us all together as a big family to learn your word, to learn your scriptures, that we can get something out of it, that we can walk away with your blessings, with your, with your grace and your mercy upon us. And I thank you for your son, that he was willing to give his life for us, that we would escape the curse of death and I ask that we do not take that we do not throw that blessing away that we take that and we use it to the best of our ability by keeping your laws and your commandments and I ask that today your name is honored with the Shabbat in Yoshua's name Amen all right Amen thank you guys very very much and um, we will begin with what we do every single week which is going over some of the most awesome things that you may ever hear some of the, the most awesome things that you may ever um, understand or come to understand and um, what we call these are well what these are are these are the laws of our creator and a lot of people these are foreign to a lot of people a lot of people don't find the quality that i find in them uh, or that we find in them or the people who keep the torah find in them you'll find trinkets of gold you'll find trinkets of wisdom you will find things that inside of these you will be able to adjust your life so that you are able to find this kingdom road this kingdom road that we are looking on is not an easy path forward it is not a set it and forget it. it is not say a prayer at eight years old it is not uh, everything that man-made doctrine has told us it is not and I can tell you it is not because simply when you read from Genesis to the end of Revelations and all the extracurricular books there's a standard theme there is a common goal that our Creator has and that when we are called ch children of the Most High we are those people who obey the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. And a lot of people are so scared, they're like, well, that, that's gonna put us into a bondage, or you know, we don't wanna be, we don't wanna be slaves, we're, we're not those kind of people, we're, we, we, we just, we don't want man's hand upon us. And you know, when you look at things in that kind of a nature, and when you look at it as the churches of the world look at it, and I grew up, my entire life was in a Christian church. I was a Baptist, my mom was a good Christian, church lady she was always there on Sundays we were always there on Wednesdays we were there Sunday nights we were there we were really good Christian people right and we had a set of ways that as I got older and as I started reading scriptures these sets of ways are not what our creator wants us to do for instance eating pork we have been told not to eat pork and when I was in the Christian church we actually had potlucks and at the at the end of church right after we got done with it we'd all go downstairs to the church kitchen and we'd have like uh, pork and beans we'd have everybody there was pork all over the place everybody was making this kind of stuff now when we read scriptures it becomes very clear things just of the pork nature are an abomination to our creator why is pork an abomination to our creator because it hurts us it will kill us if you've never done any studies on swine alone it will kill you. There's enough disease and all this bacteria and things inside of this, and it's bad. But you will have men 
who get paid in a in a 501c3 church who will tell you that our Messiah, who you guys call Jesus the Christ, made all food clean. That's right. He made all food clean. He came and he went and he walked the Torah perfectly. He became the perfect ultimate sacrifice for us just so that we could eat pork, right? Because it's so delicious. That is what the Christians will tell you. They will tell you he completely cleaned it. And so those are the traditions of men that we need to get rid of. These are the traditions of evil that we have been bestowed upon. And this is why the Torah in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy are the greatest books that we have ever been established. They are the greatest things that we can ever have because within these, these laws, statutes, and commandments, we can understand what the heart, mind, and soul of our creator is like and how he wants our heart, mind, and soul to act. And it has to do with obedience. It has to do with love. And if you think that you love our creator with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul, as you sit and eat pork rinds and eat bacon and do all sorts of things that are against what he says, that is impossible. That is like trying to tell your wife you love her with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. At the same time, you beat her up every single morning and you beat her up at night, right? It doesn't go hand in hand like that. It doesn't work like this. And our, we need to be obedient to the law, statutes, and commandments of our creator. And so this is what we are about to go under real quick. Before we do that, let's say hi to anyone in the chat room. Mr. Cole, who do we got? We have Joanna. We have hi, Cindy, Joanna. Cindy LJ. Cindy. The Grand. Uh, the Blend. All right. Uh, Zachariah, Damon, Zach. and Rhiannon. Zach, Zach Z. Here. All right. Drag, Drag is here. Drag, all right. Jeannie, not of this world. Bobby Z. Oh, Bobby Z. Sylvia. Yeah. I think that's everybody. Well, that's, that's, that may that's be, that might not be many, but it is a tremendous amount for us. And this is blessings that you guys are all there. I do want to give another special shout out to Chris from the Bobby Z channel. He's in the chat. This guy has been, um, there's, there's only five of us right now that are um, teary-eyed, uh, bloodshot eyes, and um, he is part of that little group. We are, this family, we are going headstrong, and for the last month, all we've been doing is copying scriptures from one book to, to a digital version, and Chris has been doing an amazing job, and much of the New Testament he has done, so huge props out to that brother. Uh, thank you, brother, for, for helping us out with this, man. You are just a, a solid spoke on our five-spoke wheel here, six-spoke wheel that we're doing, and we thank you, brother, for this. And he says that he saw a picture for a church inviting people to come for a bacon sandwich course on a Saturday yeah, morning. Yeah, bacon, and that's the thing. That is the thing, and, and you know, it's, it's real easy to get caught up into this, but we have the biggest thing that we need to do is save our souls, right? When we say, when I say save our souls, I'm talking about individually. The only thing that I can ever do is save my own individual soul by my actions and by my obedience and by my walk and by my way. We have 120 years that we have to figure this out, right? And if we are saying that these statues, laws, and commands are on the cross and we don't need them, well, that's a, that's a bad, bad way to start. So we're about to begin on this and I will begin. And again, Oh, Rhiannon's mom's here. Hi, Rhiannon mom. Rhiannon's mom. I hope you are well. It is awesome to have you second time around. Much love to you. I hope you guys are finding something awesome in this. And we love your family. And so uh, we love all you guys. Let's begin. You guys ready? Yep. All right. Very first thing. The very first commandment that any of us have, the very first thing in scriptures, is to be fruitful. All right. Continue on. To multiply. M replenish the earth. So do it. Have you moved the fish, fowl, and every living creature? Stop right there. Stop right Chris here. The grand says she was meditating on the first commandment to be fruitful. How horrible the things that being done to the fruit of our children in this nation. Yeah. Well, it's yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and when we look at these commandments, let's just go back to this. And this is the cool thing about having this live is that we can all sit and chat with you guys, just like we're kind of hanging out, right? And this is this is the power of the internet, and the power of technology, and and just the power of, of uh, the generations we're in. Being fruitful, as, as it is the very first commandment, everything we do from the time that we get up to the time we go to bed has to deal with, are we being fruitful? Everything that we do. And where the grand talks about the, the fruit of the children and what's happening to these children, um, it, is a, it is an abomination. And we don't know as a world what the next generation is gonna look like. This generation from the, uh, you know, we didn't have we, we always had people that wanted to dress up in other people's clothes, like men and dressing up in women's clothes. But now it has become not just um, one of those sideshows that we have, but it is a commonplace thing. And instead of us all looking back like this is very weird, now everybody is into this. And it just, we do not know what the next generations are, are going to be like. And, and absolutely, like the grand says, 
being fruitful is is everything in our lives and the fruits of our labors and the fruits of everything that we do are visible in every facet of life. All right, back to this. All right, where are we at? Hey, hey, Tess, much love, sis. All right, number three, replenish the earth. I don't know where we're at. Let's just start with that. All right, replenish the earth sub- and uh, hit, hit it. So do it. Have dominion over fish, fowl, and every living creature. You are burying every tree for food. And women should build their own families. Master sin. Every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Do not eat the blood. Walk for me and be perfect. Guard Yahuwah's laws, covenants, and statutes. And that says it 50, over 53 times, my friends. Um, and so for those, anybody who is joining us between now and in the future or anything of the sort, if you guys take a look at this and the number of times this commandment is repeated, it's over 53 times. There is no commandment anywhere in scriptures, anything like this, that has this many, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. And it keeps telling us what it is, is guard Yah's laws, covenants, and statutes, right? And that is what we're reading right now. If you are reading with us, you're beginning this part of guarding it and learning this. And unless you learn what the laws of our creator are, they're always going to be taboo to you. And that is the danger of us not knowing the laws of our creator is we can walk through life. And unless we are guided by the creator, then we're going to fall into traps. And so this is why the Torah is important. Okay. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Get the password. Okay, stop. All right, guys. Kind of speak up to our, our uh, roofs making a bunch of noise and all sorts of stuff here. Hope you guys can hear us. Keep the feast of unleavened bread. Matzah. There's one Torah for the stranger and the Ebrim. Saying to all firstborn to Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones for Yahuwah. You shall not make graven images. Do not bring Yahuwah's name to naught. Keep the Shabbat. Keep the Shabbat. And if you guys, again, here we are. You guys are actually keeping commandment 22. If you guys are observing this, this day, the seventh day, you are keeping a commandment, right? And how hard is this commandment? We're told to rest. We don't have a tremendous amount of... Um, rules that we have on a Shabbat. But the one rule that we have is that we are to rest and we're to have our family rest, our maid servants are to rest. We're not supposed to we're not supposed to do anything, right? This is the chill out day. This is the day that our creator has made that we can recharge and become extra special, right? We can get our groove back on. But when we are working like the the best of the, the workers seven days a week, 24 hours a day, our bodies will deteriorate. We will get older faster. We will get sicker easier. And the seventh day changes absolutely everything. And so the seventh day is important. From sunset to sunset, here we are. And um, much love to you. Honor your parents. Do not, Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up the altar by the steps. If a man steals cattle, he shall destroy it five times. Yeah, who is lost for criminals? No sacrifice to other gods. Wait a second. It's do not lie with beasts. Yeah, do not lie with beasts. Do not oppress a stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do not charge your brother interest. If you buy your neighbor's train, return to him before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not what is torn of any beast. No false report. Do not follow the multitude of evil. Do not judge and righteously against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. And take no bribes. Do not oppress a stranger. Love the stranger. Give your land rest in the seventh year. And, then, and let me, I want to go back to this, Kevin 47, and talk about this because we're, we're reading a new book. It's called The Order of the Ancients. And it is talking a tremendous amount about the Melchizedek priesthood. And it is talking about a little group of people. Um, it almost like, the, like what you would think of as church deacons is, is what it was. But this was like 6,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, something of this sort, where we had um, Enoch. And we had um, all of the, the old ancients. And we had um, this little, uh, almost like a boys club. But part of this little boys club is that, number one, the, the Torah is the number one thing about this club. Um, everything is about obedience. It is always about the Torah. And to get into this, the order of the ancients, into becoming a, a Melchizedek order of the priest, how they had it back in the days, the one thing was you had to love everybody. Like you literally had to love. It, it's all about love. It is all about loving our neighbor understanding people, a lot of patience. And we're also reading a book during our daily readings, um, which is the, uh, what was it called? Enlightened ones. The Enlightened Ones. And it's actually the words of Messiah Yahushua, where we have never, ever heard the words of Messiah Yahushua ever. And a tremendous amount that he talks about in that is love. And the signs of those who are people of the Most High 
is that there is a different kind of a love. And it talks more about the love that we have for the people of Yah and that we are always there to support them regardless. And, you know, between those two books, I'm learning a tremendous amount about love and about a ton of this. And, you know, you always bring this back to the Torah, right? We have these commandments and they're, they're pretty straightforward, right? Um, do not oppress a stranger, love the stranger. It seems easy enough, but are we doing this in our lives? Are we doing this to the degree that we are loving to the degree that our creator wants us to love people? And that's the world we live in right now is not love, right? If you want hate, if you want darkness, if you want discontent, if you want evil, um, step outside your door, right? It's right there. It's crouching at our doorstep and it is trying to enter in through every facet. And so love is one of these things that um, it's, I don't know if it's talked about enough, but it is what the kingdom is built upon. And, um, you know, we, we got to give our love out. Okay. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feast of Yahuwah. Do, Do not, not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the message of Yahuwah sends before you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with other Elohim or outsiders of the land. Do not make or use anointing oil on an old person. Do not make or use perfume on an old person. Do not eat the fat. Jade, you have to speak up. You're like across the books there. Um, Return what is your neighbor's? Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Limit his time of separation. Obey Yahuwah's Yahoo hygiene laws. Keep the day of atonement, Yom Kippur. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your only sister for wife. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. Do not sacrifice your son of Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be Jay, holy. I think we got you now, Jade. Okay, do not reap the corners of your field, or, or you shall not lean your vineyard. Do not deal falsely or defraud your neighbor. Do not lie or be a liar. Pay your worship the day's wages to do. Do not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. You can hear for your sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. And again, here's we're going back to this love, right? Lots and lots and lots of stuff. And, you know, we, uh, being on YouTube, I, I get slightly impatient. A lot of times I will get a lot of, a lot of impatience and I will see the same questions over and over and over. And you will get the same stuff. The Christians will say it over and over and over, right? You, you explain to them as, as, and you give them verses on, you know, right foods to eat and the way that we should be going forward. But everybody has this figured out, right? Everybody has listened to that man in the pulpit that is preaching on the wrong day. And he's told them the wrong advice for so many years. They're hooked on it and they don't want anything. And so that impatience is part of me not having the love that I need to have. And so all of these books and all this stuff is, is just, you know, a lot of lessons for all of us and all of us. And it comes back to love. Love our neighbor as ourselves. Okay. Do not diverse your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Mingle in wool. Do not lie with a taken woman. Do not eat the fruit of the tree for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round your beard or the corners of your head. Do not cut yourself for the dead. Do not get tattoos. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Have correct weights and measures. Do not walk in the manners of the nation. Keep the feast of first fruits, Shavuot, and the Omer camp. Keep the feast of trumpets, Yom Terah. Keep the feast of Sukkot, Shem Niatzeret. If you blast in the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Honor the Jubilee year. Confess your sins to Yahuwah and repay who trespassed against. The Torah of being a Nazir. Where is he on the four corners of your garments? The laws of whoever touches the corpse. Follow Yahuwah's laws of inheritance. The Torah of keeping your oath to Yahuwah. Do not add or take away from the word. Okay, let's pause on this real quick because we do end up with a lot of folks who watch this stuff for the very, very first time. And here's something we have, right? We have an entire world who believes that we can worship on a Sunday without a problem, right? If we worship on a Sunday, we've, we've broken this commandment because we've added to or taken away from the word, right? If we're eating pork, and I'm, again, I'm, I'm gonna attack pork this time, it is we are adding to or taking away. When we say that our Messiah went through and was tortured to death so that we could eat pork, what is that saying about us? What is that saying about us understanding the kingdom and about obedience and about being clean and about staying clean, right? If we are allowing, if we are giving ourselves freebies and we can do what we want, say what we want, then we're simply adding to and taking away from the word. And that is the part of the Torah. We have to ingrain this into our hearts, minds, and souls so that we are unable to fall away from this. When we are in sketchy territory, when we are in dangerous, sinful territory, we need the Torah because we wouldn't know that we're in that area without it. We don't know what sin is unless we have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That is the only 
way that we can even identify what iniquity is. And we are told that iniquity will send us to hell. And we're also told that Torahlessness, where we don't keep the Torah, our Messiah is going to tell us, depart from me, ye who work Torahlessness. Or the other word is ye who work iniquity. So if you're just living in sin and you're having it up and you don't care about the law, statutes, and commandments, that's a problem. Okay, 109, guard your soul. Learn to fear Yahuwah. You shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Bind the laws upon your hand and the front between your eyes. Write the laws on your doorpost. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Cleave to Yahuwah. Swear by his name. Okay, next one is destroy graven images. And let's take, for instance, that the laws of our creator are on the cross, right? Let's just, let's take what the world says and goes, okay, those laws are, those pesky old laws, those aren't for us, okay? So if that is the case, where we have destroy graven images, that means that you can sit there and you can have a little idol of wood, stone, and metal, right? Because you don't have any Torah. And we are told over and over and in, in, in over that our Elohim, is not in wood, it's not in metal. We don't bow down to anything like that. We don't do anything like that. So if we are able to say that the laws of our creator are not good, then then that would justify you to go get a little Buddha doll and rub its belly and worship that, right? That's what these. That's what is saying. And so you can't say that the laws of our creator are no good or they don't apply to us. If that is the case, let's go down each individual one. What law doesn't apply to you? And this is the list. This list right here are the laws that we have fleshed out throughout the years that we can keep today. We can keep all these, right? Every single thing in this is something that we can keep, and it's not too hard. Okay, do not make an idol of Yahuwah as the pagans do to their Elohim. Rejoice, no Yahuwah has blessed you with. Do not do what is right in your own eyes. Do not hearken the words of false prophets. Do not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. You should not do any, or you should not eat any abominable thing. You shall give to the stranger clean food that died of itself, but you shall not eat of it. Give tithe of your increase of seed year by year. Laws of the end of the seven year release. Do not borrow from the nations. Do not harden your heart, nor shut your hand from the. Three times a year, all males shall appear before Yahuwah. Officers and all your gates. Do not plant ash off poles near the altar. There must be two or three witnesses. Hearken to the prophet Yahuwah has chosen. The prophet has Deuteronomy. Do not remove your neighbor's property line. How to deal with a false witness among Torah keepers. The first child is to get double portions. If your brother cattle poles are lost, and you find them, you must return them. A woman should not wear what pertains to a man, nor a man wear what pertains to a woman. If you find a bird's nest with the mother and the babies or eggs, take the babies from the mother. If you build a new house with a flat roof that is able to be lived on, you must put a railing around it. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. Law of divorce. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. If you lend it to your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset if that was his pledge. Do not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Do not go back for the forgotten sheep in the field. Leave it for the stranger, fatherless, and widow. Do not muzzle your ox when he treads out grain. If your brother dies and has a child, you shall take his wife and name the firstborn after your brother. At the end of seven years, you are to read the Torah, the Feast of Coat. Okay, so there we go, everyone. Um, Eli, let, load us up into that. That is those laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator. The ones that the majority of the world, I would say 99% of the world, have tossed um, in the trash. And um, these are things that, uh, you know, uh, do apply to us, and they will enhance your life. And, you know, if you guys... Uh, hopefully you guys are learning um, through this channel, if not, you know, through scriptures themselves, that these these um, these laws are amazing. And you will there's not a there's nothing that's outdated. There's nothing that is uh, old. There's nothing that uh, won't apply to you tomorrow. It's all good. Brother Glenn says, do as thou wilt is now the whole law according to today's church. Well, yeah, and that that's, you know, that's Alistair Crowley. And that that is that, you know, for whoever knows that, that's the old Satanist Alistair Crowley. Um, it was uh, George Bush's wife's grandpa or dad, um, the old evil guy, one of the evilest people in the world, and that was his motto. He's a Freemason, and his his they love it. They do as thou wilt, and you know that is um, is also Anton Lavey, Anton Lavey, who was the um, leader of the Satanist Church in, in California. He was all over that. He says it's the law of Thelmia. It's the rule of the fiction Abbey of Thelmia. I think that's how you say that. In the classical satire by the French priest and occult student Francisco Rebellus. So it must be all the same. 
The same stuff. The same Freemason. Yeah, I think they're all. I think everybody, everybody evil is a Freemason. Not not everybody evil is a Freemason, but for sure, everybody in the Freemasonry is evil. Okay. All right. So we are heading over, guys. So we are in Genesis right now. We're kind of getting our stuff together. I'm super sorry. My uh, my wing guy, he got up super late, and so we are sitting here struggling with you guys along with this live. So we are super sorry for this. Now we are to where we need to go, and we actually have this on the wrong side. So you have this at the bottom. So. Um, I don't even realize that. Yep. So hold on, my wingman is totally has his. He's sleepy. He is really sleepy, <laughs> and so guys, we're super sorry. All right, so we're gonna have to. Uh, okay, listen. While we're while Eli's sitting there messing around with this, let's talk a little bit about this um, this book called The Order of the Ancients. And for anybody who hasn't actually heard of this, this is quite amazing because I will tell you a little bit of some interesting stuff that I got out of this today. I didn't know, right? Okay, so we didn't know Ham, Ham, Japheth, and uh, Shem. We had no idea how they made it to the ark. We had no idea how there were giants after the whole flood. We had no idea of this. Well, when you read the Order of the Ancients, it is incredibly amazing because it puts all and inside of this, actually, this one isn't the Order of the Ancients. This one is the Book of Abraham. The Order of the Ancients was another book inside of this, but inside of the Book of Abraham, it's talking about uh, Noah had 12 wives. And so the wife that he took onto the uh, boat with him wasn't the mother of all three of them. Um, she was the mother of Ham and Ham only, the mother of Japheth and Shem. Um, I guess they didn't make it to the boat or something of the sort, but that uh, was something that was simply amazing that I had no idea how the giants came up afterwards, um, how that even happened. And now, because of that book, we now know that Noah had a bunch of wives and it all comes very clear. Did they ever right. say anything about King Og? Did they ever say anything about King Og? But we were able you know, for those who have questions about the Targums, now that we're throwing all of these extracurricular books together, most of this stuff all makes very good sense. It all meshes together very, very well. And you're, we're getting these like, oh, yeah, oh, wow, oh, man, that, that's what that meant. And so um, simply amazing. All right, now we're ready. Zach said Parable Vineyard's doing a study on that, but I don't know if he meant that or if he meant the... Nazarene. Yeah, no, and Parable of Vineyard. I think he's definitely doing one on the Nazarene, the one um, as well. Yeah. So we're all going, I guess we're the only two channels out there that are doing this, but we're headstrong into this. And you, we're probably not going to stop for a little while. We're going to get this added to our website as well so that you can actually read this stuff online. It is a super cool book. I have not found anything that uh, leads me to wonder about anything like that. Um, as in the Targums, I do have that wonder every once in a while. Okay, here we go. Genesis chapter 35. And Elohim said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bet El, and dwell there, and make an altar there to El, who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. And Jacob said to his household, and to all who were with him, Put away the foreign mighty ones that are among you, and cleanse yourselves, and change your garments. Okay, now, because of all the extracurricular books, I don't know if I have way too many details on a lot of this stuff. Um, what do, what foreign object do they have? What is he talking about right here? Uh, putting the La mic Laban's idols. Yeah, Laban's idols. And so we ended up with with um, coming out of of Laban's house, a, t a ton of stuff, a ton of evil stuff. And they, in fact, I think they had the skull of that guy. Um, it was like a skull with something under whatever tongue it had left. Okay, three. Yeah. And let us arise and go up to Bet El, and let me make there an altar to El. Who answered me in the day of my distress and has been with me in the way which I have gone. So they gave Jacob all the foreign mighty ones which were in their hands and all their earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them underneath the terebinth tree which was near Shechem. Okay, um, what do you guys make of the earrings in their ears? Um, um, we know that we know the mighty ones. Why do you believe or why, why would, uh, why do you give up the earrings as well? Maybe because they're brand new people, I don't know. Any probably thoughts on pagan this? jewelry, probably stuff that's attached to paganism. Could be, absolutely. Yeah, it could be something of that sort. I mean, yeah, Laban's not a good guy. Do we know of anything wrong with having earrings? No, I mean we know that Abraham certain gave uh, Rachel earrings. Yeah, they gave her a no oh, giant no, nose no, ring. Yeah. Who, who, who gave him a nose ring? Gold. That was uh, that was Abraham. That was Eliezer. Okay, at right, five, and they departed, and the fear of Elohim was upon the cities that were all around them, and they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. And Jacob came to Luz, that is in Bet El, which is in the land of Canaan, he and all the people who were with him. And he built there an altar and called the place El Bet El, because there Elohim appeared to him when he fled from the face of his brother. And Deborah, Ribka's nurse, died, and she was buried 
below Bet El under the Terebinth tree. So the name of it was called Alan Baca. And Elohim appeared to Jacob again, and he when he came from Pada Aram and Barakim. And Elohim said to him, Your name is Jacob. Your name is no longer called Yaaka. I don't know what I say, but Yisrael is your name. All right, that didn't sound right, though. No. He said, Your name is Jacob. Your name is no longer called Jacob, but Yisrael is your name. So he called his name Yisrael. And Elohim said to him, I am El Shaddai. Bear fruit and increase. A nation and a company of nations shall be from you, and sovereigns come from your body. So this is interesting. You know, we we're talking about um, bearing fruit, right? And, and having, you know, um, being fruitful. And the very first thing that uh, our uh, creator says is bear fruit. And um, are we about to the other? Two more verses. Two more verses. All right. Anyone else have anything? Uh, I don't think I have anything, but I'm pretty sure you guys named Yeshua before, right? Uh, maybe not officially. Yeah, maybe not officially. I think we've read this about 500 times, and so we don't actually know where it actually was changed at. So, I mean, well, the angel uh, told him that his name was Yisrael, but it wasn't, like, officially from Yah yet, I don't think. Man, so, how do you think that went down? You think, hey, hey, guys, my name's no longer Yaakov. They call me Yisrael. I don't know. They probably, they probably questioned it, but then he, like, explained to him why or something, and like, oh, okay. Wouldn't that be weird? All of a sudden, I mean, it's I, like... I think, I think this is probably normal for them, because, you know, uh, Abraham had his name changed as well, so they probably, like, similar stuff. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that would go down if I uh, told you guys my new name or something. You guys need to call me my new name. Call me Pharaoh. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, here we go. Um, 13. 13. And Elohim went up from him in the place where he had spoken with him. Yeah, okay, now we're heading back up to the Targums. Now, for those who have never, ever heard this before, the Targums is yet another translation that we get a ton of stuff in it. And so let us go through and see what the Targums has to say. And Yahuwah said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there, and make there an altar unto Elo, who revealed himself to thee in thy flight from before Esau thy brother. And Jacob said to the men of his house and to all who were with him, put away the idols of the peoples, which were among you, which you took from the temple of Shechem and purify you from the uncleanness of the slain whom you have and change your raiment. All right. So this talks a little bit different here. This, this says, talks about um, the uncleanness of the slain. Um, and they stole the idols from Shechem. Shechem. What slain are we talking Maybe about? They're the ones here? that they killed when they took the idol. Oh, they, that, do you that think, dude, maybe. That guy, well, they didn't kill that guy who they took the idol. Or they, they, they killed a firstborn, didn't they? Well, that, for the idol, that was the idol thing, right? But, I mean, they didn't, I mean, there, he's talking about, right here he says, um, from, from the uncleanness of the slain whom you have, maybe that is, maybe change from the uncleanness of the slain whom you have, and change your raiment. Yeah, I don't know who, who what slain they have. Maybe, maybe it is this dead idol. It's probably it. I, I mean, I, I suppose I would corrupt you. If you had a skull... That would make you that would make you a cling, right? I think so. Would it? Uh, I mean, I think it's a skull. I if think. you had a human skull, would that make you a cling? I think bones are unclean, right? I don't know if they are or not. Do we know? Uh -huh. I don't know. All right, here you'll have to look that up. Okay, let's continue on. Um, change your raiment, and we will arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto Eloah, who heard my prayer in the day when I was afflicted, and whose word was my helper in the in the way that I went. And they delivered unto Jacob's hand all the idols of the people which were in their hands, which they had taken from the temple of Shechem, and the jewels that had been in the ears of the inhabitants of the city of Shechem, in which was portrayed the likeness of their images. And Jacob hid them underneath the terebinth that was near to the city of Shechem. All right, so it talks a little bit more about this. Um, so they had jewels that were in the ears of the inhabitants of Shechem. Um, maybe that was the earrings they were talking about? Anyone? Maybe. Okay. Let's continue on. And they journeyed from thence, offering praise and prayer before Yahuwah. And there was a tremor from before Yahuwah upon the people of the cities round about them. And they pursued not after the sons of Jacob. And Jacob came to Luz in the land of Canaan, which is Bethel, he and all the people who were with him. And he built there an altar and named that place to Elohim, who made his Shekinah to dwell in Bethel, because there had been revealed to him the messengers of Yahuwah in his flight from before Esau, his brother. Okay, is anyone with me on this? You guys with me? Yeah. Anything? Yeah. Okay, next one. And Deborah, the nurse of Rivka, died and was buried below Bethel in the, in the field of the plain. And there was told Jacob concerning the death of Rivka, his mother, and he called the name of it the other weeping. Uh, the name of his mother's nurse. Yeah, yeah. Well, Rivka, has, has said the death, concerning the death of Rivka, his mother, 
This is what it said. And Deborah, and Deborah, the nurse of Rivka, died and was buried below Bethel in the field of the plain. And there it was told Jacob concerning the death of Rivka, his mother, and he called the name of it the other weeping. Does that make sense? They both died. Well, yeah. they're, both, yeah, they're both dead. But, um, I don't... Yeah, it was revealed. He got like a messenger from uh, Yeshak or something. There's some heavy stuff to be uh, getting revealed to you. Okay. And Yahuwah revealed himself to Jacob again on his return from Pada of Aram. And Yahuwah blessed him by the name of his word, and after the death of his mother. And Yahuwah said to him, Hence, hence to four was thy name Jacob. Thy name shall be no more called Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And Yahuwah said to him, I am El Shaddai, spread forth and multiply. A holy people and a congregation of prophets and priests shall be from thy sons whom thou hast begotten. And two kings shall yet from thee go forth. And the land which I gave to Abraham and to Isaac will I give unto thee and to thy son. And after thee will I give the land. Okay, what are we talking about with two kings? Two kings shall, shall yet from thee go forth. Are we calling King David, King Messiah? Messiah? Or maybe you're talking about like Israel and uh, Judah, two different sections. I don't well, that's two different sets of people. I mean, he's, he said two different kings. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, but Glenn, you know, you're just talking about two different kings. I would, I know we have, you know, the kings of known are, are, you know, David and Messiah. Those are two big kings, but I mean, there was a zillion other kings along the way. Okay, and the other uh, version of this says, And Deborah, the nurse of Rivka, died and was buried below Beth El under the oak. And he called the name of it the Oak of Weeping. The Elohim of eternity, whose name be blessed forever and ever, hath taught us precepts, which are beautiful and statutes that are comely. He hath taught us the blessing of matrimony from Adam and his bride, as the scripture expoundeth, and the word of Yahuwah blessed them. And the word of Yahuwah said to them, Be strong and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it. He hath taught us to visit the afflicted from our father Abraham the righteous, when he revealed himself to him in the plain in the, of vision, and gave him the precept of circumcision, and made him sit in the door of his tent in the heat of the day, as the scripture expoundeth and said. And the word of Yahuwah revealed himself to him in the plain of vision, and again, he hath taught us to bless those who mourn from our father Jacob, the righteous, for he revealed himself on his coming from Pada of Aram, when the way of the world had happened to Deborah, the nurse of Rivka, his mother, and Rachel died by him in the way. And Jacob, our father, sat weeping and bewailing her and mourning and crying. Then wast thou, O Lord of all worlds, in the perfection of thy free mercies revealed to him and didst comfort him and blessing the mourners this blessed him concerning his mother, even as the scripture expoundeth and saith, the word of Yahuwah revealed himself unto Jacob the second time on his coming from Pada Aram and blessed him. Okay. Brother Glenn says, I would agree it was David and Yehoshua. Yeah, okay. Um, Eli, do you want to go down? Uh, just a little bit more here. Okay, back still at the top. And the Shekinah, Shekinah of Yahuwah ascended from him in the place where he had spoken with him, and Jacob erected there a pillar of stone in the place where he had spoken with him a pillar of stone, and he outpoured it upon a libation of wine and a libation of water, because thus it was to be done at the Feast of Tabernacles, and he poured oil of olives thereupon. And Jacob called the name of the place where Yahuwah had, had spoken with him, Bet-El. Okay, so we'll head back up here, and we're heading to the bottom right here. Okay, we're in verse 14 at the bottom. Uh, 15. 15. Okay. And Jacob called the name of the place where Elohim spoke with him, Bet-El. There they departed from Bethel, and it came to be, when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath, that Rachel began to give birth, and had great difficulty giving birth. And it came to be, as she was having great difficulty giving birth, that the midwife said to her, Do not fear, for it is another son for you. And it came to be, as her life was going out, for she died, that she called his name Ben-Ani, but his father called him Benjamin. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is Beth Lechem. And Jacob put a standing column on her grave, which is the monument of Rachel's grave to this day. And Yisrael departed and pitched his tent beyond the tower of Adar. And it came to be when Yisrael dwelt in the land that Reuben went and lay with Bila, his father's concubine. And Yisrael heard about it. Now the sons of Jacob were 12. Okay, let's talk about this real quick. This little uh, creepy incident right here. We have, uh, and this is when you only have just a scripture and you don't have other scriptures outside of this a lot of it doesn't make a lot of sense um let's fill in a little bit why did reuben go and defile his father's wife anyone well, well we get from is it jasher i think jasher and we find out that he is angry because 
he's spending Jacob is spending more time with Bella that because that was his like best friend to Rachel, her handmaid, that was like close person to Rachel, so he was spending more time with her, and that was upsetting Reuben. Yeah, and so this was a another wife of her, his dad, and this was we've talked about this before a uh, very uh, dysfunctional uh, family, and, and you know I guess you that would be the word for it, dysfunctional. Um, and they, uh, this was a jealousy thing. This wasn't just a, he looked at, at uh, you know, uh, his wife and thought, man, this is, she's beautiful. This was jealousy. This was something, this was an intentional, um, this was an intentional evil, right? This was something that you can't undo. This broke the relationship between Jacob and his wife. And it is, it is uh, you know, just, it, more dysfunction in this family. Okay. 23. Um... I still blame Laban for all this. Yeah, 23. <laughs> 23. Um, the sons of Leah were Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, and Shimon, and Louis, and Yehuda, and Yissachar, and Zebulun. The sons of Rachel were Yosef and Binyamin. The sons of Billa, Rachel's female servant, were Dan and Naphtali. And the sons of Zilpah, Leah's servant, were Gad and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Pada, Padan Aram. Okay, now we're heading back up to the targets at the top. Let's see what we can glean. And they proceeded from Beth El, and there was yet much space of provision land in the coming to Ephrath, and Rachel traveled and had hard labor in her birth. And it was in the hardness of her travail that the midwife said to her, Fear not, for this is to thee a male child. And it was in the going forth of her soul, for death came upon her, that she called his name the son of my woe, but his father called him Benjamin. Now, do you guys think that, uh, I mean, it seems like the midwife is trying to give her some good news here, right? Hey, don't worry, you're about to die, but it's a male child, right? Yeah. Um, do you think that was a glorious thing, having a male versus a female? Yeah, I think it was, like, important because, like, the family line continued on. I think it was, like, like kind of like a, like a, like a kingship thing where, like, the more sons it had, <clears throat> the better it was. There's strength. Yeah, there's a strength in, in the sons for sure. Definitely a strength in the sons. Okay. Um, Let's see. Okay, so carried on. The other version of this says in the Jerusalem, it says, and there was a space as much ground to come to Ephrath, and Rachel travailed and had a hard labor in her birth. But his father called him in the language of his sanctuary, Benjamin. It yeah. did like the skip thing. Like it just had one part and then it skipped to the rest. That was different. Yeah. Okay, so if that didn't sound right, it didn't. <clears throat> okay, and Rachel died and was buried in the way of Ephrath, which is, in, which is Bethlehem. And Jacob erected a pillar over the house of burying which is the pillar of the tomb of Rachel unto this day. That's interesting. The house of burying is what you call the grave, right? That's, that's a new way to say it. Let's go to the house of burying. Okay. And Jacob proceeded and spread his tent beyond the tower of Adar, the place from whence it is to be. The King Mashiach will be revealed at the end of the days. Okay. That just said King Mashiach. Who is this? Is Mashiach? Yeah, I think this is what we're talking about yeah, this right is here. strange because this is Jewish, right? Because like Jews wrote this. Well, you, this this isn't Jews. There were no Jews until the fourth son. But they came out of like uh, Babylon, Jew, the tribe of Judah. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they could be called that. But I mean, this is the thing. They everybody, even the Jews of today, they knew a Messiah was coming. We know we knew a Messiah was coming, right? They may have missed it, and they did miss it. And as much of the world seems to be missing it as well. Okay, where are we at, yeah? Um, we're just after King Mashiach. Uh, King Mashiach. Where was that at? So I need to navigate. There it is, right there. Okay, and it was while Israel dwelt in the land, in this land that Reuben went and com confounded the bed of Billa, the concubine of his father, which had been ordained along with the bed of Leah, his mother. And this is reputed in regard with regard to him, as if he had lain with her. Okay, what did that just say? Uh, yeah, that's messed up. <laughs> which had ordained along with the bed of Leah, his mother. And this is reputed with regard to him, as if he had lain with her. Oh, is uh, oh that was essentially like he had laid with his own mother, because that was the conky. That's what he was saying. Essentially, even though it wasn't his mother, it was because that was the wife of his dad. That was essentially yeah. So he basically took on uh, you know everybody's looking at him like he's like a yeah he had a he had a scarlet letter on his back for the rest of his life after that one. Okay, where at? And Israel. And Israel heard of it, and after and it afflicted him, and he said, "Alas, that one should have come forth from me so profane." Even as Ishmael came forth from Abraham and Esau from my father, the spirit of holiness answered and thus spake to him, Fear not, for all are righteous, and none of them is profane. Whoa, what is, what is he saying? 
What does that mean? How, how does... Ruben, yeah, Ruben should be cut off from the land. Maybe he, should, he, should, he should be, like, banned from the tribes. Well, he, he, you hear his blessing towards the end of the time, right? Yeah, he, he got cursed. Yeah, he got, they all got cursed. I mean, none, none of these guys walked away okay from this whole thing. Joseph Benjamin did. and Judah, I think. Benjamin Joseph did. Benjamin Joseph did. He had two Judah, or three kids that came across with an, an okay blessing, and the rest of them became uh, servants of something. Okay, so after Benjamin was born, the sons of Jacob were 12. The sons of Leah, the firstborn of Jacob, Reuben and Shimeon, and Levi, and Jehuda and Yisachar, and Zebulun, the sons of Rachel, Joseph and Benjamin, the sons of Billah, the handmaid of Rachel, Dan, and Naphtali, and the sons of Zilpha, the handmaid of Leah, Gad, and Asher. These are the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Padam Aram. Okay. It's inter it's, I find this whole thing with Reuben interesting that the dude was able to stick around, right? That he didn't get completely exiled from his entire he, place Jacob's and kicked out. Jacob's going to hate him for the rest of his life. He did right? hate him for the rest of his life. And, you know, he, he ruined his relationship with his wife. Um... He ruined There's a bunch of lives that got ruined in this whole thing. Tons of bad things. So, Brother Glenn says, in biblical times, the firstborn was given certain unique rights, responsibilities, and privileges. A married couple's firstborn male child was given priority and premise in the family and the best of the inheritance. The nation of Israel is identified as God's firstborn in the Bible, Exodus 4.22 and Jeremiah 31.9. In other words, Israel held a special place of privilege and blessing among the nations. Right, yeah, and I guess if you go and defile the bed of your mother, you're going to lose that space among the nations and all that. All right, Eli, where are we at here? Uh, you're on 27. All right, now, we're heading back to the bottom, guys, on Yah's scriptures at the bottom. And Yaakov came to his father, Yitchak, at Mamre, or Kirath, Arba, that is in Kebron, where Abraham and Yitchak had dwelt. And the days of Yitchak were 180 years. So Yitchak breathed his last and died, and was gathered to his people, aged and satisfied of days, and his sons Esau and Yaakov, buried him. So Jacob's 120, Jacob and Esau are 120 at this point. Yeah, they're old. They're really, really old. I mean, if we can make it to 120 these these times, we're going to be frail. We're going to be like a prune. It's not going to look good. Okay. And good. Now, we're heading back to the top for the last paragraph here. And Jacob came to Isaac, his father, at Mamre, the city of Arba, which is Kebron. For there Abraham and Isaac had dwelt. And the days of Isaac were 180 years. And Isaac expired and died and was gathered to his people, old and full of days, and Esau and Jacob, his sons, buried him. Why are you smiling? Because I saw last night he expired. Oh, yeah, he expired. Yeah, he did. Um, that's called expiring. When your milk is gone, it's just like that. It's expired. It's gone. Okay. Um, anyone else have anything else out there in this? Anyone else in the chat room? Mr. Um, Gold? Something that we didn't talk about was Reuben's, Reuben's, the kingship of all that. And then we moved to Judah, Levi, and Benjamin. Yep. Okay, everybody. So that is it. Um, we thank you guys very, very much. We love you guys very, very much. We're going to end you with have a... the ironic blessing. You have the ironic blessing. Well, let's just... Uh, yeah, go ahead. You got the ironic blessing? Yeah. What? All right. So we'll do an ironic blessing real quick. And this is to all you guys. And this this blessing is... is um, you know, it's one of these things. We are told to bless folks. And, you know, we, we truly want these blessings to go forth and to work. And so, um, Eli, are you ready? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where Jaden had it. Okay. Here it is. All right. All right. Number 622. Yep. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak unto El Aaron unto his son, speaking, On the wise you shall bless the children of Yashorel, saying unto them, Yahuwah bless you and guard you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they shall put in my name upon the children of Yashorel, and I will bless them. All right, everybody. Um, we love you guys very, very much. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, being part of this stream, being part of this. We love you. Hope you have a wonderful day. May Yahoo bless you. May he keep you. And we love you. Hit it. There we go.
Uh, we are so sorry about that, everyone. Much love to everybody out there. We try to keep them contained. May Yahuwah bless you guys. May he keep you. May you forever be in his grace. May you forever find his Torah. May we meet each other when the Messiah comes. And thank you guys very much. We love you all. Oh, Have sorry a wonderful for day. making your dogs bark. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys. All right. Shabbat shalom. Shalom.